In this video, we're going to be talking about the principles behind holster wedge use and how we can use those principles to solve certain comfort and concealment problems created by various different body types and gun combinations. The first thing that I wanna talk about is how the holster wedge itself acts a lot like a fulcrum when it interacts with our body and pressure. A fulcrum is the point on which a lever rests or is supported and on which it pivots. So for example, if we take something like a teeter-totter, we put the fulcrum right in the center and that allows both sides of it to go up and down. But if we take that fulcrum and we move it just to one side of the teeter-totter, it can no longer move. It's fixed in that one position as gravity comes down on it and presses up against the fulcrum on that single side of the teeter-totter. And when you use your imagination, you can see how this pertains directly to holster wedge use. If we take a wedge and we put it on the end of our holster muzzle, it's going to make a change on the opposite end. So we put the wedge on the bottom portion of our holster down by the muzzle, and it's going to make a change in a difference up towards the top of the gun by the slide or the grip. So if we take this idea that Wherever we're going to place the wedge, it's going to make a difference or cause an effect on the opposite side of the holster. We can start solving some of the issues that are arising based off of our different body types and gun combinations. So for example, a lot of us have trouble concealing the top corner of the grip on our gun. So in order to make a change on the grip side of our gun, we need to place the wedge opposite of it. So we're going to place the wedge lower on the muzzle end of the holster, but off to the slide side of the gun to affect the grip itself. Another issue that a lot of us have is the top of our rear sight printing. And again, using that principle that wherever we place the wedge, it's going to have that effect on the opposite side of the gun, we'll take the wedge and we'll place it on the grip side of the gun to have an effect on the slide side of the gun. Now that we figured out where we wanna place our wedge, it's important to also consider the size of our wedge. Some of us don't need all that much wedge to get our desired level of concealment. For me personally, I don't need to use very much wedge to get where I need to be, but other body type and gun choice combinations might need a larger wedge to accomplish the same effect. So earlier I used the example of a teeter-totter with the fulcrum or the wedge in this example in the center causing it to be able to teeter-totter back and forth. But an assumption that we make when we're talking about a teeter-totter on a playground is that it's on level ground. And so when we place the wedge on, or the fulcrum on one side of the teeter-totter, it causes it to stay in this one position. But if we take the teeter-totter and we put it on a hill like this, but we want it to be like this, we have to add a much larger fulcrum or a larger wedge to get the teeter-totter to stay horizontal like this. The hill in that example is essentially a body type with a more rounded midsection. When we place a gun in the appendix position on a body type with a more rounded midsection, the gun itself wants to tip away from our body as it interacts with the stomach. The issue with that, of course, is that we're causing issues likely with comfort, concealment, and even safety. If we have the gun tipping into our body and we try to go to holster it, the muzzle itself is naturally pointed into our body. So for safety reasons, comfort and concealment reasons, we want to work the holster into a vertical position. And the way that we can do this is by adding a wedge to the midline or even the lower end of the holster so that it interacts with the body and presses the muzzle end of the holster further away, thus causing it to be a vertical angle. The last thing that I wanna talk about is wedge placement in terms of ride height on the holster. A lot of the times it's gonna work really well for us to have it on this lower end of the holster, but on certain body types and gun choices, we might want to move it just slightly more up to the midline of the holster. The goal here is essentially to just make sure that the wedge itself is making enough contact with your body to have the desired effect. This is largely applicable to, again, the body type that has a more rounded midsection, because when we get to the bottom of the stomach, there can be a much more vast valley. And instead of creating a really, really, really large wedge to fill that valley, we might consider just moving it slightly higher up on the holster. And we might also consider actually bringing the entire holster to slightly higher up on our body so that it can make enough contact with our body in conjunction with the pressure from the belt to actually have that desired tilting effect. We hope this video was helpful for you in navigating the different uses and applications for holster wedges. And if you're looking for more resources, please go check out the resources available on our website as well as our YouTube channel.